I wanted to go over problem 2.7 from the, this was from homework one. So 2.7, this is a book problem from Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering, and this is the fourth edition. And so anyway, it says the exothermic reaction A to B plus C was carried out adiabatically and the following data recorded. And then it gives you some data for X, the conversion, and the rate that they recorded for each conversion. And then it has a few parts. The entering molar flow rate of A was 300 moles per minute. And then for part A, it says, what are the PFR and CSTR volumes necessary to achieve a 40% conversion? B, over what range of conversions would the CSTR and PFR reactor volumes be identical? C, what is the maximum conversion that can be achieved in a 105 dm cubed CSTR? D, what conversion can be achieved in a 72 dm cubed PFR that is followed in series by a 24 dm cubed CSTR? And then for part E, what conversion can be achieved if a 24 dm cubed CSTR is followed in a series by 72 dm cubed PFR? So I'll just go ahead and start writing some of this stuff down. First of all, it says that it's exothermic. It's A to B plus C. Know that FA naught is equal to 300 moles per minute. And then it gives you the following data, x. So 0, 0, these are the conversions. And then, so, th so this would be what you would have if you were, say, running an experiment and measuring data. So then for the rates for each of these conversions, you had 1, so this is the data it gave you, and the easiest way to solve this problem is going to be from a plot. So we want to make that, we want to make a plot, and the plot we want is going to be something like this. So the FA naught over minus RA to X. So we have everything we need for that, so we want, so the way I usually do this is I'll make another column with the whatever I'm plotting, so FA naught over RA, and we know what FA naught is, so I just went through and calculated all these, so this one's 3. And then we want to go ahead and plot this. So this is the plot we get, and <clears throat> oh yeah, so this is FA naught over minus RAx. You want to be careful with these because sometimes only one over Ra is plotted by x, and so then to get the volume, so the way I have this plotted here to get the volume, it's just the this multiplied by this, but if you, for a CSTR anyway, but sometimes it, the plot will just be 1 over the rate by x, and so then you would need to also multiply everything by FA0. So just keep that in mind. So for A, it's asking for the volume of a CSTR and also a PFR. So it's asking for the PFR and CSTR volume necessary for 40% conversion. So 40, oh, I'll write that different, <coughs> x equals 0 0.4. So for a CSTR, we can just go to this plot and x equals 0.4 is right here. So then we would just draw up and over, and then it's just this area. 
So that was, well, and I guess that's about 60. So 60 times 0 0.4, and that's equal to 24 dm cubed. So then for the PFR, at 40%, it's the air, so for the PFR, it's the area under the curve. So this is the CSTR, and for the PFR, we go over to 40%, or 0.4, and then for the PFR, it's this entire area, because it's the area under the curve. So we just need to add all that up, and or we just need to calculate this area. So the way I did it was I just took, so we already calculated the area for that part, so it's just the 60 multiplied by 0.4 plus, and then we want the area under this curve. And I just said, okay, 300 minus 60 multiplied by the 0.4, and then we need to divide that by 2 because this is just half of that uh, rectangle. So 300 minus 60 multiplied by 0 0.4 divided by 2, and that's equal to 72 dm cubed. And then for B, it wants to know over what range would the volumes of the CSTR and the PFR be identical? So volume of PFR and CSTR identical. So if we look at this graph, we know that for the PFR, the, the volume is the area under the curve, and we know that for the CSTR, it's the area of whatever square or rectangle you end up making based on where you end up on this plot. So for instance, say you are at 0 0.7, and then you go up to here for the CSTR, it would be this entire area here, and that would be the volume. And for a PFR, it would be just this area under the curve. <clears throat> so then looking at this, it's pretty, we can see that they'll be identical right here. And the reason why is because if we have and just so from the 0.4 to 0.6, not from 0 to 0.6, so from 0.4 to 0.6, the area, the CSTR, so if we go up from 0.6, then the CSTR is this area. And then for the PFR, it's the area under the curve. So they're identical volumes from 0.4 to 0.6. So For C, it wants to know All right, so it, it says that your volume, so volume is 105 dm cube in a CSTR. And it wants to know what your maximum conversion is. So the way you can solve this is just looking at different points on this curve. You, so this is kind of trial and error. So, so let's say maybe you think it's 0 0.6. So if you go up point, well, 0 0.6 is right here. So 0 0.6 times 60. So that's 30. So that would have a volume of 36 dm cubes. So you know it's high. You know that it has to be higher than 0.6. So if you go up to say 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times about 240. So 0.8. Oops. Is 192. So you know it has to be less than that. So 
maybe try 0.7. So 0 0.7 multiplied by, looks like about 140. And that's 98. So it's somewhere around 0.7. So x, so the max is x is approximately 0 0.7. And you could probably get more exact than that, but for this, ex for this, I'm not going to worry about it. So for D, it says, all right, I'm going to erase some stuff off this plot real quick. So for D, it says you have a 72, you have a PFR that's 72 dm cubed, and that's followed by a CSTR that's 24 dm cubed, and it wants to know It wants to know what the conversion of these are. So we already know that the PFR for for 72, we already know the conversion for a 72 dm cubed PFR was 0.4 because we calculated that in part A. So we know that this is the PFR and we know that x is equal to 0 0.4. And then for the CSTR, we kind of need to do this trial and error thing again, where we figure out, okay, well, where on this curve does, uh, do where from, from 0.4 to somewhere along here, multiplied by something over here, it equals 24. So it turns out the answer is, around 0.65 and once again you would kind of arrive at that through trial and error but your PFR volume would look like this or I mean sorry your CSTR would look something like this and then this was x equals 0 0.65 And then for part E, it's kind of similar to D, only this time you have a you have the 24 dm cube CSTR followed by the 72 dm cube PFR. And it wants to know these conversions again. I'm going to erase this real quick. So we already know the the 24 dm cubed CSTR is. 0.4 because we calculated that, so x equals 0 0.4 for that one. And this looks like this. And then for the PFR, it's once again trial and error. We need to figure out where under the curve, so somewhere from here over to somewhere along here. And I already know the answer is around 0.9, but just normally this would be trial and error. Like the previous problem I went through, so you would maybe try, you could go along here and maybe try 0 0.6, 0 0.8. And so anyway, what you're doing is once again, just adding up this area under the curve. So you just need to find where the area under this curve is equal to the 72 dm cube. So kind of the takeaway for these graph problems is learning to recognize the difference between 
what a CSTR looks like on the plot and what a PFR looks like. So just always remember that the that the PFR is the area under the curve and the CSTR is whatever area you get to. So like say for instance your CSTR has a 0.5 conversion then it would be this or if it had a 0.6 then it would its volume would be this So this is just a good graphical way to see the difference between a PFR and a CSTR because for so for the for the same so if you have this point you have this CSTR that has a 0.6 conversion with and it has this volume so that would be let's see 0.6 times 140 so this would be about 84 dm cubed. And then if you had a PFR that was say 0.6, it would be the area under this curve. And I don't know what this is offhand, but it's just representative. You can see the difference in the sizes of the two reactors. So that's kind of a takeaway from that.